Lebanon is pushing to revive its tourism. The crisis-hit nation is hoping for an influx of tourists and visitors to help its flagging economy. 12,000 people are expected to arrive in Beirut daily uh, for the next three months. In fact, Hezbollah agreed to remove posters of Soleimani and banners from the airport road. It was after a request from the Minister of Tourism, Walid Nassar. We sit down with the man himself. Thank you for having us to Thank discuss you. how he's helping Beirut gear off the tourism season. Mr. Minister, let's start with the really most controversial part of what you did. A few years back in the PM Saad Hariri times, there was a big feud in Lebanon over some banners and posters in the southern suburb of Beirut. And it was really something hard to ask for the banners to be removed. It was something ideological, religious. How did you manage to change the frame of arrival to Beirut uh, that easily and that fast? First of all, uh, I'm happy you're here. And uh, I don't want to, in this subject, remove the billboards related to Hezbollah or any party. I don't want to be arrogant and to say that uh, it's because of my request when I raised this uh, two weeks ago, so they respond and they remove it. It's, you know, and uh, I believe that it's, uh, it's uh, a win-win situation. So, I, re I requested all the parties to remove their, uh, uh, whatever are the slogans or uh, uh, related to their parties, and we should not forget that a uh, month ago, we were in the middle of the elections. So uh, this, uh, what you are seeing all over Lebanon, it's uh, the result of the elections uh, campaign for all the candidates at that time. We had uh, more than 1,000 candidates. So imagine how many uh, billboard uh, we have. So when I asked, it was in the context we were talking about Beirut airport. Was it in the cabinet or with Hezbollah directly? When you say we were talking about it? We were, no, we were, uh, I was talking directly with a, a journalist uh, live on TV. And we were discussing how we should manage to receive the expat or the, arri at the arrival uh, at terminal. Uh, and uh, what are the most important uh, steps that we should uh, follow and implement to improve the quality of uh, uh, services at the airport of Beirut. So I said at that time we have four steps or four phases. So at the arrival we have everything related to the airlines and the aircraft. Second, the airport building, the check-in, the luggage area, Third, it's when anyone is coming to Beirut, when he step outside the, the airport, so he should call or someone is coming to pick him up, or the taxi. So the third phase is the taxi, we called in Lebanon taxi al matar. So this is it's a, a, a very important task to manage. And the fourth thing, it was that when we want to go outside the airport area, to hit the Beirut and from Beirut to go all over Lebanon. So we have the highway. And the highway, it was at that time because of the, one of the reasons, the election. So it was really uh, full of flags, uh, billboards, and uh, photos of the, you know, the leaders and uh, so on. So uh, it was, my request was really uh, uh, spontaneous. So I said it, uh, I asked live on TV. Okay. Uh, so you basically requested day, out of Hezbollah, you requested that I I requested on TV? Hezbollah and Harakat Amal. Okay, and Amal movement. For the airport road. Yes. And all the other parties in, across Lebanon. So when I left the TV, I was really uh, happy that the feedback that I got at that time, um, uh, and two weeks ago, it was really positive from everywhere. From the party's representative, the president of the municipality of this area, uh, airport area, uh, the 
all the involved parties, even the private sector, who is supporting the parties and he's investing to uh, display uh, photos of some leaders, they were really cooperative and very positive with me, with my requests. So the second day or the third day, we started. We remove, it's not only of, we remove the, the, this, uh, the billboards. The most important thing that we start to clean the road, the highway, and the, the, the landscaping of the highway heading to the airport. So now we can notice visually that there is a huge improvement that has been done uh, within 10 days on the highway of the airport. That was about the, the road to the, the airport and the feud about the billboards. Let's speak a little bit about numbers. Usually, like millions of dollars and thousands of expats arrive to Lebanon. Would you uh, share some fresh numbers? How's the tourism going and what is expected out of this summer? The numbers uh, that we are expecting to come to Lebanon for the coming three months, we did, you know, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a study based on the benchmark and we have the real numbers for the last three months. Uh, we have it by, um, by country and by uh, airlines, etc. It's a, a breakdown of uh, details. Who will come to Lebanon then? Now what we are expecting that we will host uh, around an average of 12,000 per day, minimum. The average could, should be starting next week, 14,000 a day. So from the 14,000, we have 75% from the expats, from our diaspora, 75%. And 25% foreigners. From the 25% foreigners, for, uh, foreigners, we have 75% uh, from Europe and uh, uh, the other uh, uh, areas and 25% from the uh, GCC. And uh, the, the, from the Arab world, uh, uh, Iraq, Egypt, and Jordan, they are on the top of the list, yes. And we are hoping, and we are calling, and as a minister, I'm calling our uh, neighbors, specifically the GCC countries and Saudi Arabia, to come to Lebanon. Because, uh, you know, uh, from the day that we were assigned the, as minister in the, in the government, we were working all the time to gain again the trust of the uh, international community, and specifically the Arab world, because we're part of it. And we believe that uh, well, Lebanon and the neighbor, uh, from Syria to the GCC to Saudi Arabia, it's very important to maintain a, a good relationship, uh, not only because our diaspora is really, um, uh, they are struggling from the relationship, no, not at all, because we are in need of uh, the Arab world. So we called and we are promoting Lebanon now and we are trying to display uh, abroad a lot of uh, billboards uh, saying uh, Ahla Bhattali or here in Lebanon we're saying Ahla Bhattali it means uh, welcome to Lebanon. In it's a, a Lebanese slang, it's yes. a traditional slang for welcoming. Uh, yes, and here abroad we're saying in their language. Uh, no, we're saying in Arabic, in, in the Lebanese language, we're saying uh, It means are you missing Lebanon? So uh, come back to Lebanon. This was in the Arab countries. We just um, uh, elaborated on that part, but I would really like to go to our global and Indian viewer a little bit and tell them about Lebanon. Why is Lebanon a tourism country? What's so special about it? And what are you inviting people to see? Uh, Lebanon, uh, I don't want to go back hundreds of years and to talk about the, the history of Lebanon. Uh, geographically, uh, the, the positioning of Lebanon on the Mediterranean uh, uh, and between the east and west area. It's something uh, I want to be realistic and I want to talk today. Today, Lebanon, we have three major criterias that attract 
the, the tourists tourist to, to Lebanon. First of all, uh, we have all the uh, characteristics uh, that attract the, the tourist uh, or the foreigner to Lebanon. Uh, we can start by the, not only the food to Lebanon, uh, all kind of tourism in Lebanon, the type of tourism in Lebanon, you can uh, apply what it. What do you mean by types? For example, uh, the, the sports, uh, the maritime st sports and the uh, mountain sports and activities. You have the hospitality, uh, the experience of uh, the, the rural, rural uh, uh, tourism, uh, the hiking, uh, the, uh, the experience you know, uh, for the last two years, specifically during the COVID, the, uh, the internal tourism in Lebanon yani, has been uh, really improved in a, in a, in a, in a very uh, uh, a positive way. Uh, why I'm saying positive? Because sometimes comparing with the, the crash that we had in the, in the area, for example, Cyprus or uh, Greece or uh, Turkey, no, not Turkey. So in these three countries, if you, uh, if you get the information during the crash, how the economy has been rescued a little bit and what was the, really the financial arm of the economy, it was the, tourist, the tourism. So in Lebanon, it's, uh, Lebanon is not, the service in Lebanon are very cheap now. So it's an affordable country with a historical affordable, edge to it and nightlife. Uh, nightlife and uh, day life. Uh, it's really, yani, uh, Lebanon, uh, it's very easy now uh, due to the social media and the, you know, uh, you can Google and you can, if you want to uh, search for any activity, in Lebanon, you can find it everywhere. So it's uh, uh, it's uh, it's really um, um, and the, the Ministry of Tourism. It's the the responsibility or the liability of uh, Ministry of Tourism. It's not only to promote uh, the tourism. We are relying on the private sector and on the syndicates of uh, tourism, the the restaurants. Uh, uh, the hotels. We have now in Lebanon around 127 guest house comparing to around 27 three years ago. So we have 100 guest house and the guest house, and I say guest house, it's really a very nice place in Lebanon. We should visit it because every single guest house has its uh, specific uh, um, characteristic and uh, and uh, uh, experience, um, in addition to the nice food in Lebanon, uh, and uh, you know the the Lebanese uh, are really uh, uh, generous, and they are we're known here in Lebanon how we host. Uh, any uh, foreigner to Lebanon, we take care. Do you have high expectations in, in terms of money? Now let's get to the uh, serious part of tourism. Tourism has always been a sector that is really mm. one of the few uh, thriving sectors in Lebanon for in the past. Today, what are the expectations as cabinet members? What are the discussions in the government about that? In 2018, before the crisis and the revolution and COVID, the income in Lebanon and the tourism, uh, you know, when we said tourism, it's not only restaurant and uh, uh, direct and indirect income to this sector was around $10 billion, 9.5. And this is in comparison to a very small country. It is a big number. Of course. Because Lebanon big. is a very small country, just so that the viewer can get it. Now we are struggling it. and we are fighting the IMF to get $3 billion Whereas in 2018, we... We used to get them from, from the tourism. tourism. Now, my expectation, it's, it's numbers. If we're saying that we will have uh, around 1.2 million visitors to Lebanon, so if you multiply by $2,000, 
as an average, this is the minimum, minimum, minimum 2,000 yes. spent. So this is 2.4, uh, 2.5 billion dollars. And our expectations, and I think we will have more than three billion dollars this coming three months. And don't forget that uh, we are living now in a cash economy system. The banks are closed. Everything the credit cards, and uh, we're not using the debit and credit cards. Uh, so we're waiting to, uh, for the restructuring of the bank sector. But now it means that we have a cash economy. So this cash money is coming to, the, to Lebanon. It will circulate within the Lebanese and the, the business, the small business. Definitely part of it, it should be transferred outside to get uh, to buy the raw material and the, the imported uh, products, etc. Let me end on an Indian note here to my Indian viewer. Um, I love India, <laughs> by the way. We previously discussed uh, some of your Indian uh, emotions. Um, how would you tell an Indian person to come to Lebanon and why would they come? I've, uh, I've always uh, seen in social media with Weon a lot of uh, love and uh, positive uh, comments from Indian people all, all around India towards our country and our culture. So how can you tell an Indian person watching this now to come to Lebanon? I can tell, it, I can tell you, uh, my, our Indian uh, friends, that if you go to the Indian people or expat living in the GCC, and I have a lot of Indian friends working in uh, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, uh, Qatar, Bahrain, I can assure you that all of them, they are waiting for the situation to be more uh, uh, stable uh, to come to Lebanon because all the experience that they are living in Dubai and Abu Dhabi and the GCC area, they can live it here in Lebanon. And I can say here it's really the summer season, it's really nice. Um, it's a Mediterranean country, it's yes, not a desert. Of course. It's different. Yeah. Um, so they have to ask only the community, the Indian community in the GCC, which is huge. We're talking about the thousands of uh, hundred uh, above millions in the GCC of Indian working there and they all know that uh, they, they are not far from Lebanon because they have a lot of Lebanese uh, from our diaspora living together, working together, so they know well about Lebanon. It's a question of only connection and I'm working with the, a third party from Europe. Uh, he's a businessman, uh, originally he's Indian uh, uh, he is living in Switzerland. We are now uh, targeting to uh, create a, a, a line, airline, between India or somewhere close to India to Lebanon, direct, direct flight, not via GCC. And this, it's not, uh, it's feasible. It's feasible if we target a, a cheap or a affordable uh, ticket, uh, the charter, so we can do it. Uh, imagine if we can host per, uh, this is I'm a sure preliminary. I'm sure if there was a direct flight, there, there would be many Indians wanting to come and see our many. part. Of and not only from East. India. India could be a hub from the Far East area to, 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 to have a, a direct flight to Lebanon. One more thing, when we say they like to come, they want to come, they're waiting to come. I'm going to end where I started here, and this is the last question in our interview today. Many people around the world think that uh, this country is in a state of war. There's like uh, fanatics, uh, strong religious ideologies, armed groups, militias, because the news is always something like that. So is it really, it was easy to remove the billboards, but is it really that easy to remove that uh, prejudice or that judgment ar around about Lebanon? When First of all, I want to highlight on uh, a very important, this is my opinion, that the media is number one. The media can affect negatively or positively by transmitting the real uh, uh, image or identity of Lebanon. So you think uh, it's Lebanon. not the real image of Lebanon? Of course not. 
We don't have armed groups in Lebanon? Of course, we don't have armed groups. And I, I never uh, see it. We see it uh, on TV because uh, the media, they search for, uh, for it. But I, I never uh, saw it. We know that there is, uh, you know, in, uh, in Lebanon, it's Lebanon. Yeah, anyway, then again, uh, when this we mosaic that we have in Lebanon, it's really, uh, it's something positive. Uh, but if we have uh, stability in Lebanon with this mosaic, it's really, uh, this is something very, it's uh, rich to Lebanon and attractive. So I'm asking you, as uh, you are in the media, to try to show the beauty of Lebanon. We do what we can do, but usually the local media is the biggest perpetrator in, in, in that sense, yeah, if yes. we want to speak uh, about this. We are always factual and we state the facts. And we hope, uh, in fact, to have a very uh, thriving and good, prosperous tourism summer, uh, as per your works. Thank you for having us. Thank you very much. Can I give you a last number? Yeah, of course. Last month, in June, Lebanon, the arrival numbers of visitors, 210,000. 210,000 in June. Okay? And in May, 237,000. So in two months, the number of visitors is around 450,000. So we're saying that for the three months, coming three months, definitely will exceed the one million. This is uh, talking about a four million uh, population country. So this is proportionally of course. big. Yes, it's very Mr. Big. Minister uh, Walid Nassar, thank you for having us. Thank you very much. For more about this, watch we on World is One.